so let us come back and learn one more class of biomolecules that is enzymes so what are the biomolecules what what did we study we have studied first in the first class carbohydrates right after carbohydrates gradually i went into a topic called amino acids after amino acids i taught you proteins also now let us learn the next class of the class of biomolecules that is enzymes so how should i define an enzyme suppose it is asked for a two marks question if it, how how should i write basically enzymes are proteins fine so enzymes are proteins what do they do these are the proteins where are they produced they are produced by the body or they are produced by produced by the biological systems biological systems okay what is the use of producing these they are going to produce these to catalyze to catalyze specific reactions okay i have written a lot of things let us explain what it is specific reactions what does this mean basically when i speak about proteins uh, enzymes enzymes are also a form of protein right now when i take this table observe carefully now this this one particular reaction urea converting into or it has to get converted to carbon dioxide and ammonia right then i have to use an enzyme right a catalyst rather if you speak in chemistry terms or a biocatalyst urease then only this particular reaction will proceed and form carbon dioxide and ammonia i'll give you some one more example let's let's see suppose <coughs> when i take okay i've just read the story uh, maybe i felt this is uh, apt to this particular topic now when i take your soft drinks right this soft drinks what do they have yeah they have both carbon dioxide and water yes correct now this carbon dioxide and water both are filled into the can and they have sealed under pressure this carbon dioxide and water when they combine they form a reversible reaction called carbonic acid so this is what is formed right now, what happens is <clears throat> when this particular soft drink can is opened right when you are taking this when the soft drink can is opened up the first gas or that fizziness when you open it you find that fizziness right that fizziness or this bubbles is due to release of carbon dioxide correct and the leftover is your water done now once this carbon dioxide is released you not feel that you know that uh, tanginess or you not feel that uh, taste of that particular soft drink now what happens when you consume the same soft drink with water now there's no carbon dioxide when you consume this this particular thing is consumed now what happens is our tongue right or the salivary glands are going to produce an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase anhydrase right this is this is present in our blood right this carbonic anhydrase which is produced by the salivary glands are present in our blood this carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme this is going to combine with your water now observe carefully carbonic anhydrase combines with this water and <coughs> this particular thing it combines with this water reversible reaction and it immediately releases carbon dioxide it means this particular water is there right this carbonic anhydrase combines with this carbonic acid which has formed now and it releases this carbon dioxide and water and what do you feel you feel that fizziness again immediately as soon as you pour in the tongue basically this has escaped out but with the action of this carbonic anhydrase in the tongue again that comes in contact with your water which is there in the uh, soft drink and again the reversible reaction happens and both carbon dioxide again starts escape forming on that particular you feel that fizziness on your tongue so what is the role of your enzyme enzyme is to catalyze the reaction to fast or speed up the reaction that is why i said enzymes are protein means produced by the biological systems produced by the biological systems to catalyze specific reaction every reaction has a specific enzyme i can't take amylase and try to convert urea to carbon dioxide and ammonia right now after learning the definition <coughs> let us come back and learn uh, uh, the properties of enzymes so what happens what actually are the properties what means characteristics of enzyme if i should be specific if i am learning the second topic characteristics of enzymes what is the characteristic of an enzyme now when i speak or uh, this particular enzyme <clears throat> even if a small quantity of enzyme is used right now the other day i said when i have to convert sucrose into glucose and fructose i require 
this enzyme yes now without that enzyme the conversion of sucrose is highly impossible it means little small quantity of that enzyme also converts sucrose into glucose and fructose if that is absent it's going to take years for sucrose to convert into glucose and fructose so what is the characteristic of enzyme first important thing small or smaller quantity smaller quantity of enzyme is efficient or sufficient for a particular reaction smaller quantity of enzyme is sufficient to catalyze a reaction to catalyze a reaction okay this is done i have understood okay little small quantity if i also take i can convert it but specific it should be specific the next important thing is they have a particular every enzyme has a specific ph means only at that ph not even others another way in that specific ph only that particular enzyme will act for example if i say they act at specific ph only for example if i take salivary amylase right and now salivary amylase which is produced by our salivary glands so what is the ph if i say salivary amylase is an enzyme yes this amylase from where is it produced it is produced by a salivary glands correct now this salivary amylase why is it produced it is produced to digest the food what we eat whatever we are consuming whatever carbohydrates whatever we taking that <laughs> carbohydrates are the starch material that salivary amylase will start digesting that in this particular part of your digestive system mouth right now here that salivary amylase has a ph of exactly 6.7 now what happens this salivary amylase if it is going now this food has suppose this food has entered into a stomach right in a stomach what do we have we have dilute hcl correct so this dilute hcl which is there in the stomach correct now this ph of dilute hcl is almost 2 2.4 now tell me will this salivary amylase at this ph which is 6.7 will it act at in the stomach though even though it is going in along with the food no it will not it will become inherited it will it become inactive now so what am i trying to say they are going to act at specific ph only as i said salivary amylase does not act in the stomach it will become inactive because the ph is 2.4 very high it is here in, the, in our <coughs> mouth it is only 6.7 so specific ph should be maintained for all the now let us come back after this the next important characteristic of your enzyme is observe whenever an enzyme has to act right <clears throat> yes what is the purpose of uh, uh, using an enzyme suppose i have a reaction okay let me draw a pathway now i have a reaction starting now i have reactant a and reactant b yes now both are combining we have uh, given it certain amount of uh, threshold energy minimum amount of energy both are reacting they are trying to cross the energy barrier we call it as activation energy barrier and finally they form products correct so what do we write here this is the minimum energy threshold energy and this is your activation energy barrier and this is your product correct yes now this energy barrier whatever we are speaking about activation energy barrier suppose if i am taking the same reactant and i am allowing it to react and i observe that the reaction has completed very very fast it has almost formed the products now this is also an energy activation energy barrier but what is the difference between this and this here i have not used with this is without enzyme and this is with enzyme with enzyme so what happens here when i am using an enzyme the reaction rate has increased more double the time right it has completely doubled it has reached the energy barrier faster and finally formed product so what is this doing your enzymes will lower enzymes will lower ea what is ea energy barrier or activation energy barrier so i'll write here activation energy barrier 
yes so when this activation energy barrier means you are using less energy to cross the energy barrier that means the compound is stable or the product is stable so what are we going to write enzymes will lower activation energy barrier hence and hence form stable products that is what is our aim right stable products so now just see if i'm taking this enzyme right uh, any enzyme and that particular enzyme if it is quickly dub or it is make a for allowing starch to convert into glucose within no time i can easily get the products which i expect and if i get the product and that product will automatically be stable because lower the energy higher is the stability of the system that is what you have studied in thermodynamics if the system energy is very low automatically the product formed is stable so enzymes will this is your third point enzymes will lower activation energy forming products so what did i do i said little amount is enough then i said the specific the ph then i said they're going to change or they are going to they will act only at specific ph i said so when you are <coughs> this particular question is asked for enzyme characteristics of enzyme you can write that along with that you can always mention write uh, any example i've just listed out here they will not ask you but i have listed out series of enzymes here pick up learn any three uh, uh, examples these are the enzymes this is the reaction which they're going to catalyze and you can easily uh, get complete marks in that you can also write one more example with this here activation energy for sucrose right so normally sucrose for converting sucrose yeah <coughs> Activation energy was found to be 6.7 kilo joules per mole. Right? For, for crossing this, how much amount of energy was used? 6.7 kilo joules per mole was used. But activation energy with enzyme, when they have observed this activation energy with enzyme, I said with enzyme here it was 6.7 kilo joules per mole. But when they have used the enzyme, it is almost 2.3 kilo joules per mole. It immediately got converted to products so that is the use of your enzyme so please learn all the characteristics of enzymes yes. now i have learned what is the definition of enzyme then i said what is the characteristic of an enzyme now we are going to see what is <coughs> the mechanism for an enzyme to attack right so now we are going to learn mechanism very simple it is mechanism for enzyme to act right now basically every enzyme i said there are specific to particular substrate every enzyme is specific uh, site has a specific uh, uh, site for uh, or the substrate has a specific site where the enzyme will go and attack yes that particular specific ph yeah that also should be maintained temperature should be low then only you'll get the required products the required products so basically in step one what happens is your enzyme will combine with the substrate okay now suppose this is your substrate fine and your enzyme with this active side this enzyme is going to combine with this it will mold according to the substrate yes and it will form a complex called enzyme substrate complex yes now after that once this is formed yeah this <coughs> particular enzyme together along with this enzyme now this is your e plus s this is your es with time and with the ph maintained this enzyme is going to form or this particular enzyme substrate will again separate out into two products right now this two product is what enzyme product gradually it's trying to form an enzyme product not a little like separated from the substrate enzyme product this further finally when it's trying to form the products it will become enzyme plus product you'll get two particles one is your enzyme and one is your product up so basically you have the same mechanism again but we are not going to the biological aspects of that it is basically to make you understand enzyme acting on the substrate forming the products enzyme acting on the substrate forming the products i wanted to show you this how is the star formed yeah so step one this will be step two this will be step three that's it